class diagrams. If you have studied object-oriented programming, then you must have heard of classes. Classes describe the different types of objects needed within our system and the relationships between them to meet the system's objectives. A class diagram shows a collection of classes, interfaces, associations, collaborations, and constraints. Class diagrams provide a wide variety of usages. Analysts use the class diagram to model the domain's specific data structure, known as domain model. While designers use the class diagram to model the detailed design of the target system, known as the design model. Class diagram is a static diagram, meaning that the class diagram represents the static view of an application while it's not running. In a class diagram, each class acts as a template or a blueprint for a type of object that can exist in the system. Each class has attributes and methods. A class is represented as a rectangle with three different sections in a class diagram. The top part of the rectangle contains the class name, middle part contains attributes, and the bottom part contains methods. Only the top section is mandatory. The remaining sections are optional, according to whether the customer of the diagram needs to know more details or not. Attributes can be simple, primitive types. Integers, dates, etc. or complex objects. In the domain models, where classes are used by business analysts, the data types usually correspond to units that make sense to the likely readers of the diagram. For example, we can say minutes, dollars, etc. However, a class diagram in a design model that will be used to generate code needs classes whose attribute types are limited to the types provided by the programming language or types included in the model that will also be implemented in the system. Visibility. To specify the visibility of a class member, these notations must be placed before the member's name. Plus sign, public, minus sign, private, hash, protected, tilde, package. Multiplicity. Specifies how many instances of the attributes type are referenced by this attribute. Can be absent, meaning multiplicity of one, a single integer, or a range of values specified between square brackets separated by quotation marks. You can use a star as the upper bound to represent the upper limit or a star on its own to mean zero or more. In the 8 a.m. example, we can save up to five of the last transactions of the current client and we can keep track of all the transactions of the day. Operations are features of classes that specify how to invoke a particular behavior. UML provides several ways of representing relationships between classes. Dependency is the weakest relationship between classes. Dependency between classes means that one class uses or has knowledge of another class. Dependencies are typically read as uses A, for example. In the sample UML class diagram shown, the class customer uses the class ATM card reader. The customer doesn't need to keep track of the card reader after that anymore. It simply uses it when it's needed and then forgets about them. Association is a broad term. Any class has any relationship with another said to have an association with it. Association includes just about any logical connection or relationship between classes. Associations are typically read as has a, for example. If you have a class named ATM card reader that has a reference to the currently inserted ATM card, you would say ATM card reader has an ATM card. You model association using a solid line. Aggregation. Unlike association typically implies some sort of ownership, Aggregation also refers to forming a particular class due to one class being aggregated or built as a collection. Aggregations are usually read as owns A or contains A. For example, if you had a class named session, that session stores are the current transactions done by the customer during that session. You show an aggregation with a diamond shape next to the owning class and a solid line pointing to the owned class. Composition. Composition represents a very strong relationship between classes. It's used to capture a whole part relationship. A composition relationship is usually read as is part of or consists of, for example, 
If you say that an ADM in your system must have a card reader, you can represent this with a class named card reader that is part of a class named ADM. You show a composition relationship using a filled diamond next to the owning class and a solid line pointing to the owned class. Generalization. Generalization relationship conveys that the target of the relationship is a general or less specific version of the source class or interface. For example, the class transaction is a general version of the classes named deposit transaction and withdraw transaction. Generalizations are usually read as is a or is a type of starting from the more specific class and reading toward the general class. So you would say a deposit transaction is of type transaction. You show a generalization relationship with a solid line with a closed arrow pointing from the specific class to the general class.